Welcome to the Health Trip Podcast. My name is Jill Foos. I'm a functional medicine and integrative nutrition health coach. I created this podcast to bring you along as we travel down intriguing science-packed roads, debunking old medical paradigms and perusing new innovative therapies and modalities with the finest functional medicine doctors, practitioners, and like-minded biohackers while living our best life. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Health Trip Podcast. Today's episode is all about red light therapy and hair growth. And if you've been following me, then you know that I've been on my own journey for at least four to five years and have finally nailed my own personal equation to hair growth about eight months ago. And I have stacked multiple protocols. So hair loss affects over 100 million people. For men, it's more socially acceptable to lose your hair, although I'm sure most of them would like to have it back. And for women, not so much. We want a full head of hair. When we start seeing it shed, thin, and lose its volume and see our hairline moving, it's terrifying. And not just because of how it looks and feels, but because we know that something deeper is causing it to happen. And that loss of control is heart-wrenching. We literally put the future of our hair in the hands of doctors that may not, may not even have a clue as to how to really help us reverse it. So I started to see my own hair change after giving birth to my five kids, uh, then more changes after having a partial thyroidectomy, and then even more changes as I went through a stressful divorce and started my menopausal journey at the same time. So it's been um, decades of ups and downs, but I would say the last four to five years of my own life have been really bad in terms of my hair shedding and hair loss. And my story is not unique. There's many of you out there who are dealing with this right now and have been dealing it with, with it possibly for up to 10 years, maybe even your whole life. So when I started researching which light device I wanted to add to my hair growth journey routine, I was totally confused on what to look for. I ended up watching a ton of videos, looking at the red light therapy hair devices um, in the on the websites of some of the top doctors who deal with um, hair loss. And I was looking at what were they offering their clients and uh, narrowed it down to a couple. And I chose the laser cap HD plus because the man who invented it is the original innovator of red light therapy caps. So how could I possibly go wrong? And he is my guest today. And I'm so excited to bring him to all of you. Dr. Michael Rabin is an MD and has his MBA. He's an entrepreneur and an innovator in the hair restoration industry. He is the founder of LaserCap and the inventor of, um, he's the founder of LaserCap Company and the inventor of the LaserCap, the original LaserCap, which was FDA cleared for hair regrowth in men and women. LaserCap uses a treatment known as low level light therapy in which skin is exposed to low amounts of light that will penetrate through the surface of the scalp and stimulate the hair follicle beneath. And it's um, been a game changer in my hair growth journey. And he is going to help us really understand how this works, what to look for when we're shopping around and all the mechanisms behind the magic of red light therapy and hair growth. A little medical disclaimer before you dive in. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice or for making any lifestyle changes to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others. Consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any of my guests on my podcast. So sit back and um, put your listening cap on and we'll dive right in. Welcome, Dr. Raven. I'm so excited to have you on the Health Trip Podcast show today. My community is going to learn so much from you. So we're here to talk about um, red light therapy and hair growth. And I see that you're wearing your invention, the laser cap. Glowing and growing. Yes. And mine is right here too, which I showcase all the time on my social media. It's been a game changer for me and my, my hair growth journey. So what led you to even think to invent something like this laser cap red light therapy that you would wear to help stimulate hair growth? Sure. Well, I'm a a long standing hair loss sufferer. And so um, it's, uh, I wear it real short, uh, but I'm essentially bald. 
Uh, I've been losing hair since age 18. I've had a couple of transplants, primarily in this area here. And then on, in the back here is scalp micropigmentation because that's a lot of real estate to fill in with hair transplant. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't invent laser cap 20 years ago. I've invented it more recently. And so uh, I'm very late in the game in terms of uh, preserving or restoring my hair. So transplant is, a, is really the only viable option for someone who's already bald, which I essentially was when I created laser cap. But um, I recognized a huge market uh, and, um, uh, and uh, I'm an MD, uh, I have an MBA, so I have kind of an entrepreneurial mind uh, and um, I'm an inventor. And so I created laser cap basically to, do, to deliver uh, a better delivery system for light therapy, which has been demonstrated to regrow hair. Uh, uh, the uh, original um, uh, work on, on uh, hair regrowth uh, was just uh, by accident where uh, some scientists were looking at uh, irradiating skin, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago uh, with the idea that they're going to uh, produce um, uh, 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 with ionizing radiation, we're going to produce cancer in, in skin. And it so happens that the red light does no, um, uh, emits no ionizing radiation. So it's very gentle on the skin. And what they found out was rather than producing any um, abnormality in the skin, the areas that they were irradiating on these mice were growing hair. Mm. And so the light bulb went off a, a long time ago. And then more recently with laser hair removal, what they were finding, uh, that's a more recent phenomenon over the last 20 years, they've been using uh, intense mm -hmm. um, high energy light, red light, for example, to literally cook hair follicles much higher intensity than what we use. And what they found out was, okay, they, they, they uh, were um, uh, removing hair in the central areas where they were uh, irradiating with this light, but in the periphery to the hair removal, they were growing hair. And so really again, red light at yep. a certain wavelength, at a certain power was mm -hmm. growing hair. And uh, from this, uh, from these takeaways, there was a device called, is a device called laser comb, which was FDA cleared in around 2007. I started doing my research on light therapy around 2006. And when I saw the laser comb was FDA cleared around 2007, I said, aha, there's, there, we're really on to something here. And I said, there's got to be a better way to grow hair than combing your hair for 15 minutes every day mm -hmm. at this, with this grossly underpowered device. And so thus I created pretty much the embodiment that you see today, which is laser cap, which is uh, portable, discreet, uh, it uh, uses a battery pack uh, and enables you to just uh, 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 deliver the light therapy in the comfort of your own home discreetly uh, uh, to grow hair. Yeah, it's a wonderful product. I think yeah. um, I just want to talk about something you mentioned um, earlier is about the timeline of when you can even start a therapy such as this. You've got to start early. When, you're, when you start noticing your hair shedding, thinning, and the hairline receding, You've got to start before those hair follicles miniaturize to death, correct? Right, right. Now, the, the problem is that, that patients typically don't notice their hair thinning until 50% of the density is gone, okay? So when, you, when you, you first notice that thinning hair, you've already lost a good uh, deal of the hair diameter. So the hairs, when, they, when, when patients suffer from male or female, female pattern loss, the hairs they grow, uh, the growth stage is shorter. And when they regrow, they come back thinner. So typical di hair diameters are 80 microns, 100 microns, that's some fraction of a millimeter. Uh, and when we're young, we can grow hair very long. The growth phase is very long. So kids can grow their hair very long. In, in adults suffering from male or female pattern loss, the growth phase is much shorter. It gets down from years to months. And when it does regrow, it comes back thinner until uh, it, it continues to cycle. And then eventually you're left with these little vellus hairs like peach fuzz. So you wanna get on this at the first sign of, of thinning hair. 
and professionals. So if you have an inkling that it's happening, get to see a health professional because trichologists, wellness coaches, they have equipment, they've got technology that uh, with a with a uh, a foloscope, they can look at the photomicrographs of your hair and detect the thinning hair early. You've got to you got to get on it early and start with the medical treatments. One of them is laser cap. Yeah, I think, you know, that's really interesting you say that because a lot of the clients that come to me because of my own health growth, my own hair growth journey that I've um, shared on the internet, um, a lot of them feel so dismissed by doctors, mostly conventional medicine doctors, dermatologists who are not specializing in in hair growth um, or hair restoration. And it's not functional medicine while you and I are familiar with it, it's not known to everybody yet. It's getting out there. It's becoming more mainstream, but it's also not as financially um, attainable for many people because insurance doesn't cover it. So that, that journey of just getting to the right health professional and then finally getting somewhere and feeling so dismissed that you're fine. This is just what happens, especially when you hit menopause, for example, you're getting older. This is just the way it's going to be. Get used to it. Your, your hair, your hair looks fine. Well, you know, you're not in the shower with us women. I'm just going to speak for the women because when in clumps and it is terrifying. And then it's the stress. It's that cycle you know, you're supposed to stay calm and you, you're going to work on your lifestyle and you're going to work on all these other modalities, but the stress begets stress and it's just this vicious cycle. Exactly. Exactly. You need to seek out health professionals that are, that are focused yes. on, on hair, that are passionate about hair. Your general yes. dermatologist, although they're trained yeah. in um, uh, diagnosing and treating alopecia, um, uh, they're very... Um, uh, my medical director, who's a, uh, a, a re- world-renowned hair surgeon and dermatologist, uh, Doc Haber, Bob Haber, he would tell me the, the worst nightmare of a patient for a regular dermatologist, for just a, you know, a journey woman, journeyman dermatologist in private practice, the, the worst patient, their biggest nightmare of a patient historically has been a woman with hair loss. Oh, I'm sure. Because historically... You'd, you'd have to deal with this very anxious, very depressed, very overwhelmed uh, patient who has yep. a, a bunch of questions and needs to talk and needs to vent. And then historically, the, the dermatologist would tell them after listening to as much as they could, okay, go down to the drugstore and get yourself some minoxidil because that's all we're going to do for you. But now there's, you know, there's photomedicine, high energy devices like laser camp. Uh, there's all sorts of compounded uh, pharma topicals that have mm-hmm. shown efficacy. Uh, there's a lot of off-label medications that you can get through the dermatologist now that are showing a lot of uh, uh, hair regrowth. Uh, there's uh, in-office procedures called uh, PRP, exosome, stem. Yep. There's a whole range of, of, of treatments. And then there's a, a lot of he- health professionals that are very passionate about treating hair. Um, so there's a lot of help available. You just got to know where to look. Exactly. And that's why I share my story, because if I can help anybody out there re-navigate their health growth journey, I, that's what I'm, I've done it for myself and I'm here to do it for, for my community. And you're right. There's a lot of really cool modalities out there like PRP and the exosomes, and I've done all of it and you have to find what works for you, but we're here to talk about red light therapy and hair growth and how best to pick out the one that is right for you. And that's really confusing because a lot of people a, they don't have access to the doctors we're talking about in their community. They don't even know where to start to look. And now they hit, they go on the internet and they start Googling uh, hair growth caps, right? Or they go to Amazon and there's a lot of things out there, but I wanted you to come here and tell us what should we be looking for, right? Sure. How can we be the smartest consumer out there when we're shopping for a laser cap or for a red light therapy cap with so many brands out there and so many nuances and um, they cost a lot of money, by the way. Well, generally I would stay away from all of the -the over-the-counter devices that you buy directly. Um, 
there's there's just a lot of business people. There's there's a lot of um, I did an analysis once of um, I went to Google Shop and I and I looked for uh, products for hair loss. I think there were 19 Google pages. There were uh, I don't know 400 products listed. Uh, probably 30, 40 different red light devices listed. Uh, but the majority of these products listed for hair regrowth are cosmetic. Like 90% of them have no hair regrowth potential whatsoever. And of the photo med devices listed, the, the, uh, the laser cap, all the knockoffs, I call them my, my bastard children. Uh, uh, they've, they've, they've copied the uh, technology. The patents didn't go quite the way I wanted them to go. That's right. But I'm just the dumb doctor inventor. You know, I'm not the <laughs> business guy. Uh, but anyways, um, all of the red light devices, without fail, they're, they're grossly underpowered. They're just not driving the lasers properly. There's a lot of uh, LEDs. There's nothing necessarily wrong with non-laser, with, with, uh, with LED, but they're grossly underpowered. If you've got an LED, a non-laser, that's of sufficient power to, to deliver the energy in joules per square centimeter, that has hair regrowth potential. But all these devices without fail over the counter are just grossly underpowered. All right, so here, here, enough photons to the followers. So, so here's some names of red light therapy. Because sure. I really want to get to the basics. I want everyone to walk away really understanding um, how this, this thing works. So there's LEDs, there's red light therapy, there's near infrared light. There's photobiomodulation and low level, low level laser therapy. Are these all the same? Are they different? Essentially, essentially all the same. So lasers are LEDs, which are light emitting diodes. Okay. There's also non-laser LEDs. Laser light is coherent light. It has a certain property. It, it results in better, better penetration. But you can achieve, you could achieve similar efficacy. There's no commercial devices that are non-laser out there that uh, have sufficient power to achieve the efficacy that, that, you, that we are targeting. But you could, in theory, achieve the, the same efficacy with non-laser uh, light sources. They're just not powerful enough in the, in the commercial space. They're cheaper. And so that's why the business people will throw the non-laser, uh, the LEDs, uh, the non-laser LEDs on their devices. So the, the over-the-counter devices are just underpowered. They all do red light. They all do near infrared. They all do LLLT. Those are all kind of synonymous. They all okay. do photobiomodulation, but it's all about photons to the follicles of a particular wavelength. It's all about the power. And so what you're getting with laser cap, what you're getting with laser cap is a uh, much higher power. We pulse it. I overdrive the laser. I get very high peak power. We have longer treatment time, times. So we get much higher joules per square centimeter in the, in the efficacy range than you would get with these, these knockoffs and these, you know, helmets. So, and all so do we not want stuff. LEDs? Or do well, you can't find LEDs that have sufficient energy, power and energy in the market. So I would stay away from the non-laser devices currently. Got it. Okay. And so is there ever a mix of different sources of light in the camp? Well, there's some devices that have LED and laser. Again, in my opinion, they're just underpowered. So, so it, it, the takeaway, the takeaway is um, don't buy direct to, from a uh, direct to consumer. Don't buy over the counter. Seek out a health professional with a passion for hair, wellness, a professional, trichologist, a hair restoration physician, dermatologist who's an alopecia specialist, because laser cap, photomedicine, photobiomodulation, just one tool in the in the arsenal. Right. It's 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 necessary, but a lot of times not sufficient. You want to use red light, but you want to combine it. Right. You definitely want to. Right. You want to stack these therapies. Yeah. You want to. Um, uh, they work by different mechanisms. So you want multiple, you want multiple treatments. You want to figure out what pharma you may be able to use. If you can't use a pharma, you don't want to use a, a pharmacologic like a minoxidil or some other topical, like a compounded topical. Well, there's some herbal uh, preparations that show some promise. But again, I would get it through a health professional. You had mentioned some copper peptide preparations that may show a lot of promise. But again, get right, it through a right. health professional that's done the research. Right. So you're, so 
just to back up a little bit to clarify for um, the listeners, you're recommending, and I 100% agree because I'm living it too and doing it, to use the laser cap red light therapy along with a topical. And topical could be something like minoxidil or Rogaine, right? It could be right. something like compounded, like an 82M formula, which is what I use. So I get that from a compounded pharmacy. And the biggest difference between 82M, which a lot of people ask me, and minoxidil is the delivery. There's a couple extra ingredients in 82M that makes the delivery much deeper, a deeper penetration getting to the base of the follicle that stimulates the growth more than minoxidil. It is a little bit more expensive, but it is super effective. And then GHKCU, which is what we were talking about before we jumped on, is a peptide that um, you also have to get from a peptide specialist. I would not buy that off the market, off the open market. Um, and that has shown a lot of clinical trials. Right now, I think the delivery isn't as great as 82M. Um, and it's also about four times more expensive than 82M. And 82M is about twice as expensive as binoxidil. So, you know, when I work with my clients about with hair growth, I have to look at the longevity. One, compliancy is number one. And I have to consider price because it gets expensive and we're talking lifelong. Right, right, right. Yeah, you need, uh, you need to be compliant because these are chronic uh, uh, androgenetic alopecia, male and female pattern loss, chronic progressive condition. Right. They're always asking me, uh, what happens if I stop? Well, if it's, if it's uh, male or female, if female pattern loss, it's chronic progressive. You just, you're going to regress to where you would have otherwise been without the treatment. The other big question I get, they see it with minoxidil all the time. Oh, it, 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 um, it creates a big shed. That's number one. Number two, they, they say, if I stop it, I'm going to lose a bunch of hair. And uh, well, both of those things could, could be true, but um, you're going to have a big shed with any effective treatment if you've got a lot of your follicles in the telogen dormant phase, which exactly. is the hallmark of male or female pattern loss. You've got too yeah. many follicles that aren't growing. They're in the dormant phase. And right. when you effectively treat, you kick them into the growth phase, they shed the hair. Right. That's the first point. The, sec the second point is um, uh, any effective treatment for male or female pattern loss, you stop it, you're going to lose hair. You're going to lose hair. It's not going to precipitate hair loss. Starting then stopping won't precipitate. You're just going to go to where you would otherwise have been. Now, if you've right. got a, an alopecia that's from, a, let's say, an acute illness or some other uh, condition, a drug-related hormone, mm -hmm. uh, what have you, that's reversible, you, st you should still treat. You want to treat the symptoms. You want to treat those underperforming follicles. And if you start with laser cap and, and topical minoxidil, et cetera, if your condition is reversible, you can stop the treatments later and it won't, you won't have an Ill, Ill effect. So- yeah, that's no reason. There's no reason not to start medical management because you fear you're going to lose more hair when you stop. That's not the case. Yeah, I agree. And, and it's important to work with a provider that tells you all these little nuances, right? When I first started using 82M, I didn't know, I wasn't told that my hair was going to shed anywhere from six to eight more weeks massively. I was, a, I, I thought I was going to panic, right? It was horrible. You know, so you got to work with someone and feel free to ask these questions. There are a lot of nuances here. Um, back to, I, I have your cap here. And back to the technical aspects of it in terms of sure. like when people go on websites, because not everyone, we want everyone listening to go to a healthcare professional, right? But not everyone is going to. And so I want to be realistic about that. Um, so on my YouTube channel, you're going to be able to see this. If you're just listening on the podcast, obviously you can't see it, but can you just break down what is going on inside of the cap here? When you, when you talk about the diodes and this, the websites that um, manufacturers of, of hair growth caps, red light therapy caps, talk about numbers of diodes. And so are the diodes, right. the little silver dots that you see in correct. here? Correct. That, okay. that is, that is correct. And so you're, I think you're holding up the, the uh, HD plus or the, yes. um, yeah, yeah that's got 304 lasers. Uh, over about uh, close to 600 square centimeters of scalp. 
and then we overdrive that laser, meaning I, I apply more uh, current to the lasers and we pulse it. So we get very high peak power, which is in milliwatts, and then times the treatment time in seconds gives the total joules, which is the energy. Joules is energy. Then we wow. divide by the by the um, the coverage, the 600 square centimeters, uh, to get the joules per square centimeter. The problem with the knockoffs, uh, it doesn't matter how many diodes you have, if you're not overdriving the laser, if you're not pulsing for um, for uh, overdriving and pulsing for high peak power and, and heat management you're not getting the desired uh, energies. You're not getting the, and then to add insult to injury, they don't overdrive, they run it at the five milliwatts or even less. And then they, they promote very short treatment times. They say, oh, do it for six minutes, do it for five minutes. Well, you can get away with those shorter treatment times again, if you're overdriving like I do. Just these business types, they just don't, they don't, they don't get the light physics. They, they, they just have no concept of the, of the light physics, of the science uh, behind it. And so they produce these inferior devices, but their diode counts are pretty good. You know, you can find 272 diodes. You can find there's a catalyst that has uh, three tw 312 diodes, but they, they don't overdrive. They run it continuous and then they, um, they have a six minute treatment time. So my 80 diode laser cap puts out more energy in the treatment period than that 312 diode catalyst. And so it's, you know. Uh, it's just, okay, it's, so so the diodes is how many of the lasers are and how close they are together, right? And the, so obviously the more, the better because its coverage is a lot larger on your, cool. on your head. Correct, correct. But it's the and power. You've got to overdrive. You got to overdrive that laser. And what what is that called? Like, where would somebody, if they're shopping around, there, what is that called? Nobody does it. Nobody does it but me. <laughs> so you don't. You can't even find out. You don't even know what to no, ask. No, they don't or even find mention it. it. They don't even mention. It. I'm the only. I'm really the only provider that that wholesales almost is exclusively to the health provider, to the physician and other health providers. I've got a very small online process where we sell. We did this under COVID through a telemed-like process because patients couldn't get to the doctor. Yeah. And by our, the way, but, I will, um, yeah. when we're done in the show notes, I will list my um, coup uh, I have a savings code from you guys to sell directly. Um, to and people. the the health practitioner pricing is always less yeah. than on the website. Yes. And so there, it makes no sense for the patient to, to buy at my website unless they just have nobody. Let's say, you know, in, in Idaho where we don't, you know, don't right. have anybody. Right. So very interesting. So it's very difficult to really figure out which one to buy, but I, your, your solid advice is get to a medical professional and buy from them because they are yeah, your trusted expert and they have done the work for you to find the best um, devices out there that actually work because the pricing, you know, you could go on Amazon, which of course I researched all this and you can go on Amazon and buy one for $500 and then you can buy one for $6,500. Right. right. I mean, they're, you know, and so a lot of people are going to say, well, I'll just get the, the least get expensive the one yeah. and dabble my toe in it. But guess what? You know, six months, 18 months, down the road, you're going to see zero difference. You're going to be frustrated. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So someone's just ordered the red light therapy cap. They get it. They're ready to go. What are some things we need to know about using it at home? Like we already talked about stacking it with, you know, a possible topical, but what about um, the protocol when you're just starting? Daytime, well, nighttime, do you well, need it's to be in a dark 30 room? Minutes, it's typically 30 minutes every other day. But if you're using topical, it, that's what we studied was 30 minutes every other day. But if you're using topical, then uh, more and more patients uh, are, uh, we're promoting an every night uh, protocol for 15 minutes every night where you apply topical all over top of the head, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps massage it in briefly. Uh, I like the dropper. I like the 5% men's liquid minoxidil at, at a minimum. The foam it gets in the hair, you know, it's, uh -huh. it doesn't get down to the scalp. We've got to get these topicals on the scalp. And I find that that little dropper moving the little dropper about the head, uh, massaging in it a little, so it doesn't like drip down the forehead, back of the neck, uh, right. but then immediately wearing laser cap. And so what happens with laser cap is laser cap provides warmth and occlusion, which will increase any topical absorption. 
So you apply the topical at night, immediately wear a laser cap for 15 minutes every night. Uh, and then when you're done, don't wash it out, just go to bed. You may have to put something on the pillowcase. It may, you know, there may be some residue, uh, but then you have that residual on the scalp all night, shower in the morning. That's a pretty good protocol to really maximize the hair regrowth potential with photomed, potential with photomed and pharma and topical pharma. Now, beyond that, um, you know, there's all kinds of things that the, that the health professional, the dermatologist, the hair doc can know. Uh, there's all sorts of off-label oral meds. There's uh, right. oral supplements. There's a whole range of things. Right. Because Does they work by different mechanisms. Right. And we're going to talk about actually lifestyle and supplements and, and, and nutrition because it's a huge um, part yeah. of the equation in, in, in my book. Can your hair be wet? Does it have to be dry? Uh, well, the, the manual says dry, but wet hair is actually uh, preferred uh, if it's going to get damp with the topical or if you get out of the shower before doing this, uh, comb the hair back, that exposes maximum scalp. Mm. And so the more scalp you see, the more light's gonna get to the scalp. Now that said, uh, you, if you have thinning hair, we're gonna see lots of scalp anyway. And there's so much light coming out of these devices, mm -hmm. out of the laser cap devices that there's gonna be, there'll be some light blockage, but there'll be plenty that reaches the scalp. But if somebody didn't wanna stack this with a topical or any type of pharma, 30 minutes it, every other day. And, and do you, will you still see some growth within like Absol four to six months? A absolutely. Absolutely. It, it's okay. just that uh, I'm trying to maximize hair regrowth. Yeah. For all the patients I communicate with, I want to maximize hair regrowth, obviously minimize side effects. I mean, these, these drugs, drugs and other treatments are not without side effects. Laser cap has essentially no side effects. There can be a rare transient headache. There can be a kind of a... a a tingling sensation in the in the scalp, which is normal. That's a um, uh, a nit nit nitric oxide effect, which is good. An NO effect on the in the skin, which is good. Um, but um, yeah, they they absolutely wear laser cap alone. But if you're not seeing enough progress, right. you know, it'll slow the loss. It could stop the loss. But if you're not getting reversal, we need to add other modalities. So it's, um, this is all very interesting to me because about four to five years ago is when I personally started my hair loss um, experience. I had a lot of stress. I was hitting, going through perimenopause, menopause, um, just a lot of, I have half a thyroid. So that's always been problematic. I started losing my hair when I had my five children. Um, and so it's been a long, long time for me, but I would say between four and five years ago was really when I started seeing big chunks of hair, just shedding. And sure. when I first went to, I go to a functional medicine doctor, I do my labs, I do all, you know, live the lifestyle. I do everything. And I started on just topical. She didn't even like mention red light therapy. So I did topical and I wasn't really compliant, right? So I, and I also wasn't told to use it twice a day. So a lot of pieces were missing to the puzzle. Yeah. Fast forward to now, I started all over again about eight months ago with the 82M twice a day, 30 drops each time, plus the red light therapy. And I'm in because I mean, I, I don't know. Well, if, so if you're on YouTube, you can see, and I do share pictures, but I, I actually have where I was completely bald in this one temple area. I actually have a curl forming. And how cool is that? Like it works. Well, that's people, the desired treatment effect, right? A, yeah. Absolutely. And when people say to me, I don't want to have to be in, all in all the time. I said, well, then don't start. Right. Don't start. Because this, this isn't all in all the time. It might not look the same every day, it's going to evolve and maybe there's a maintenance plan when you get stabilized, but it is the lifestyle, the protocol, it is all in. And by the way, is there a maintenance? You know, once, once you're in 12 months and you see stability and hair growth. You know, that's a real individual thing. Mm -hmm. I, um, we don't, we haven't studied it. Yeah. You know, what, what, uh, um, uh, you know, these treatments, the, the photo med uh, every day, every other day, the topical twice a day. Uh, although with the combination treatment, um, uh, I tell patients, well, you can do it once a day because if you apply the topical in the morning, it can, you know, make a mess of the hair sometimes. Uh -huh. So I let patients say, okay, we're getting good penetration. You're keeping it on overnight, uh -huh. you know, once a day on the topical. 
in, com in simultaneously with laser cap. But we don't know about really slowing and, and stopping the, the treatments. Depends on your underlying condition. With male and female pattern loss, we would say, no, you just got to just keep doing it. Absolutely. And by the way, um, if the if you're watching on YouTube, you can see behind Dr. Raven, the laser cap silver little um, Kim Kardashian travel. Yeah, that's our travel. <laughs> and by the way, when we travel, we take it with us. It's the first thing that goes into the car. Very good. And yeah. this is a real high tech version. Of uh, the, this is the, the high tech version of the uh, HD plus of the 304 laser diode. Mm -hmm. Um, I try to label this for some uh, high profile doctors like Bauman, and yeah. Dr. Bauman and, and anyway, but it's the same uh, that it, that sells through Dr. Bauman at, for five grand. I wouldn't yep. recommend, you know, when you can get the HD plus for a fraction of that. Um, yes, so. absolutely. But yeah. I still like to uh, showcase it just so you yeah. can kind of see the, the technology. Absolutely. And so as a health coach, and we tried to, we were touching on this a few moments ago, lifestyle, right? Lifestyle matters. So if someone wants to grow their hair and they want this laser cap HD plus, but they are struggling with metabolic syndrome, they're obese, they're sedentary, they're eating a very bad diet, they're not getting any sleep. Are they still going to see results? How, well, how, how important is that? Well, no, not necessarily because um, uh, so the, the follicle, so male and female pattern loss is one thing. That's genetic. Uh, you're predisposed. You know, that's a genetic um, uh, evolutionary sort of thing. With male loss, my theory is uh, it, we want older men to lose their hair because we want them to take care of what they have. You know, they've, they've they have a spouse, they've, they have children, they need to take care of things. They can't be running off having more children. And so it, you know, the, the baldness makes the, the man unattractive. You know, it's a, a hair is a sign of, you know, youth and vit vitality, right? Although okay. some, some men rock a bald hair. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of, some do, but very yeah. few, <laughs> very, very, very few. Uh, but that, but that's male and female pattern loss. Um, there's uh, there's alopecia that um, uh, from a whole range of uh, you know nutritional, hormonal, drug illness, uh, uh, and and that can get layered on top of the male and female pattern loss. So mm. male or female pattern loss may pro progress you know slowly, chronically, progressively, but then you 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 um, uh, develop one of these other conditions, some 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 immune abnormality. You know, from all the from all the glyphosate yeah. and the, the pesticides, yeah. you, you develop a gut dysbiosis. You develop, uh, uh, you know, you come down with Hashimoto's, lupus, uh, Lyme. Uh, you know, these are all immune disorders. Yeah. Wreaks havoc on the hair follicle. So the hair follicle is like the canary in the coal mine. The hair follicle, when when the hair follicle, when the body senses, hey, we got problems, we got bigger problems elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Quit growing hair. Yep. It's producing it, hair, right? Because you don't need to cool down. You don't need it to survive. Right. And so, and so um, all the time, every day I'm talking to patients who are on treatment uh, and they're, they're, they're not getting to where they need to be. And when we talk about, um, you know, their immune status, oh, I, you know, I had COVID six months ago, you know, the long COVID and the post COVID devastating to the hair follicle. Yes. Um, uh, because of some immune immunologic response that I think a lot of patients are predisposed to it because of all the, you know, it's a, it's a, um, the toxin exposure is, is chronic cumulative uh, with, you know, all the, all the, um, you know, unless you're eating all organic uh, uh, and uh, drinking, you know, bottled water since birth and, uh, and, and you know, breathing air from, you know, God knows where the air is decent we're all exposed to all of these yeah. toxins more and more. And that's, you know, creating, you know, again, the, the hair loss is just a symptom. You ask these patients, they've got a whole myriad of health problems that only the functional med doc, the wellness uh, professional can attempt to address. Absolutely. Looking and at if you the don't root get cause. At that, if you don't get at that, those underlying issues, right. sure, we can treat the symptom, you know, we can treat the symptom, but if you keep re-breaking the bone, you know, sure, we can put something on it, put a splint on it, but if you keep whacking it, 
you're going to keep busting the bone again. And that's what's happening with these. Um, we're, we're, we're treating the symptoms with photomed, with um, uh, minoxidil, uh, other, other drugs, uh, but we're not getting at the root cause. Only the only the you know the functional med types can get at the root cause in many of these instances. Western med is generally useless um, with that sort of thing. I would agree. I think lifestyle and nutrition and personalized supplementation is such a um, huge piece of this puzzle to hair growth because you're really only as healthy as your mitochondrial health right? And your mitochondrial health depend on a healthy gut. Because if your gut is where all the food is being broken down and all those nutrients can't get to your cells and do all the magic they're supposed to do, you're not going to grow healthy hair. Other things are going to go amiss too, but um, you're not going to grow healthy hair. And so one of the things that I discovered on my personal journey this last um, year that was different than before was testing, um, having a micronutrient test done and really looking at my micronutrient deficiencies on a cellular level. So I could personalize supplementation. I can't tell you how many of my clients come to me, Dr. Rabin, and give me a list of supplements they're taking. And I'll ask them, was this based on blood work? What doctor prescribed this for you? No judgment. I'm just learning about sure. the history here. It's shotgun. And it, They're just doing shotgun. I'm in a Facebook group for this. I'm in a Facebook group, group for that. I read this online. I heard this on a podcast. Test don't guess people because you can really mess up your mitochondrial health when you are over supplementing on things your body is already good on right? And you could be under supplementing on things your body actually needs help on. And those hair follicles need nutrients and they need the right nutrients. They need, the, they need to know exactly what your body needs. And then they get to, they get the message sent to them. The other component of a healthy lifestyle is nutrition. What are we eating? And I, I'm wondering, one of the questions I wrote down for you was, have you noticed in any study, and has it ever been done, where you were able to look at vegans versus um, more animal-based nutrition in terms of hair growth and wearing the laser cap? I, I've not looked at that, but but certainly, you know, if you're vegan, you're you're. Um, I think it's more difficult to optimize your nutrition as as a vegan. Uh, I think there's optimal diets out there. Uh, but that is, you know, dependent on, as you said, you have to do an analysis. You've got to, you know, some, it, it, it's got to be individualized. Right. Uh, uh, and certainly if you're, if you're malnourished and, you know, when people think malnourished, oh, you know, uh, you know some, someone starving in Africa or, you know, we see their bones, but that's not the case. There's lots of malnourished folks out Absolutely. there who have deficiencies um, and um, they're subclinical. You know, from a Western medicine standpoint, it's subclinical. Oh, your blood looks normal. Your values are normal. Well, that may be nonsense. Probably is nonsense. So you need a more uh, a finely tuned analysis. And that's what you're providing. Yeah. Now, I, I am not a vegan, but I do coach vegans. I am trained to meet my clients where they're at and where they want to be. And if that's the box they want to be at, let's optimize it because it's those amino acids that helps your hair grow. Your hair is protein. It needs plenty of protein. Um, on my website, I actually have a blog post on if how to be a healthy vegan and what supplements would be recommended or what vitamins and minerals would probably be missing. Um, so, and how to help put those in, in in healthy ways. What about chemotherapy? What about people who lose their hair when they're going through chemotherapy? Can they use a red light therapy cap? Well, they can. We've not. We have not studied it. Uh, certainly, while they're in chemotherapy, yeah, yeah, the chemo is a is a is a is a poison. It's a toxin to the cancer cells, but it'll also affect your your normal cells that are rapidly dividing, and it, it can hurt them. That's why you see hair loss, the follicles. I don't think you get scarring necessarily, but the follicles shut down uh, under chemo because I think the stem cells are trying to rapidly divide, and they're they, they the toxin negatively impacts them. So while the chemo is happening, I don't think the red light is necessarily going to be um, uh, of, of, of help, uh, you know, acutely during the chemotherapy. In fact, there's a, um, there's a technology called the cold cap, which literally yeah. uh, cools the, uh, the skin and the follicles 
slows down metabolism, which is advised. That's immediately prior to, and I think after. Uh, but certainly after your round of chemo, where you're trying to get your follicles to bounce back, absolutely. Wear a laser cap, topical minoxidil. Let's try to treat it. Let's try to treat the underperforming follicle. Yeah. Because that's different than your personal situation where you waited too long. Oh, well, you wait too long and the follicle atrophies. When you wait too long, but when the follicle starts producing that wispy vellus hair, the peach yes. fuzz, yeah. the follicle has, has irreversibly atrophied. And it, it's, it hasn't died necessarily, but it's irreversibly atrophied. And all it can produce is that peach fuzz. And at, at that point, you need transplant. It's, yeah. not, it's not coming back. Or stem cell in the future. We're, you know, we're going to try to clone, right? Clone the follicle. And, uh -huh. But that's, that, it's not available yet. So stem cell currently doesn't do that. It may facilitate some uh, rejuvenation, uh, but it, it's not going to bring back those, those follicles that are atrophied. Right. So we're coming to an end and I always leave a couple questions for um, just a little bit more fun. So, and so that my listeners can walk away with some tips that they can start implementing right now. So what sure. are your top three suggestions for improving hair growth that the listeners can start working on today without the laser cap, just what can they do today? Well, top, okay. Top three, um, uh, you, you've got to, number one, find a health professional that, um, uh, that's passionate and that you like, that you trust, and get a few opinions. You don't Absolutely. have to rely on, on, on one. Get a, get a few opinions. Uh, but that, that would be num number one. Uh, and number two, look at your overall health. Look mm -hmm. closely at your overall health. You know, you may think you're healthy. What are you eating? What are you drinking? Are you are you looking at all organic? Are you watching um, uh, uh, what, what uh, you, 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 your diet and nutrition? And seek help there as well. Try to find a functional med professional that's not only passionate about hair but is passionate about overall health. Yes. Um, m m really, more importantly, the, your overall health because if you can optimize your overall health, uh, your hair your hair growth, your hair health will follow, will generally yes. follow. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's number two. And then number three, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, we We talk about the diet here. And so, yeah, those are, oh, internet connections. And no, stuff. not you, you just, you went out for 30 seconds, but you're back. So get, so okay. redo, redo your number three that? for me. Oh, so number three, uh, number yeah. three, uh, yeah, we talked, number two, we talked about uh, uh, overall diet health and, yeah. and overall health, but you, you really got to focus on your, your exercise and your sleep and your managing your stress. Absolutely. And, and exercise and sleep will, is huge at, at helping to manage your stress. Whatever that exercise is, it could be yoga. It could be some sort of group Pilates, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you've got to really get plugged into that regular uh, uh, exercise schedule and, and sleep and, and figure out how to manage that stress. Yeah, uh, I love that. That's great. Minimize the stress. Absolutely. Because that will wreak havoc on your hair. Yes. And there's always going to be stress in our lives. Got to manage it. Yeah, how to manage it. And my final question to you is: What are your three top foods everyone should try to incorporate into their their nutrition plan that will help support hair growth? Oh gosh, three. Well, yeah, there's good hair growth vitamins. I mean, there's these big time uh, marketed uh, vitamins, Nutrafol, Viviscal, but you can find similar uh, vitamins, um, you know, with similar compositions that are not so pricey. So certainly supplementation. Uh, with a with an eye on hair health uh, would be would be good. Um, right now, I'm I'm heavily into intermittent fasting and uh, and keto and keto type. I've essentially uh -huh. eliminated sugar, uh, no sugar and no refined foods. Uh, uh -huh. I eat um, generally one meal a day around four o'clock, four to six uh, p.m. and maybe a little snack. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, that's heavy on the keto side, but that's me, but I'm not really a nutrition uh, expert, but it, it's worked for me. It's worked well, for good. me. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, uh, look at you. And then, and then weightlifting is, I've been doing that for two years. Mm-hmm. I used to run and now I'm heavily into weightlifting. And, um, uh, I joke, uh, my, my wife, who's a huge uh, athlete and she's a, has her doctorate in physical therapy and huge in nutrition and yoga and this and that mm-hmm. she follows Dr. Mercola pretty mm-hmm. closely. I don't know if you're familiar. Yes. Yes. And so, uh, Mercola, he's, uh, deadlifted now, I think 350 pounds. And so I've been in, but he's weighs 110, he weighs 210 pounds. I'm 175. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually up to 390 on mm-hmm. a single deadlift. So mm-hmm. um, the, you know, the, the, the lifting, the intermittent fasting uh, and, uh, and, and a keto diet has been w- working very well for me. So I've opted Right. So you, you've, you've really honed in on your health equation. I talk about oh, one oh. finding their health equation all the time, and it's different for everybody. Two Dif- years ago, I thought I was on my way out my back had given out. I had this chronic sciatica. I had benign benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, which is a terrible uh, condition. That was two years ago. I haven't looked back since then. Oh, that's great. Totally transformed my, uh, I mean, I was pretty healthy up till then, but I've totally transformed my health with my current regimen. Well, I would like to add some healthy foods for everyone so they can walk away Please, with a plan here. Tell me. We talked about protein a little bit, but you've got to nail that protein. And most women my age, when you're going through menopause, we don't eat enough protein. And it's the number one most important macronutrient, especially when it comes to hair growth. So making sure you're getting somewhere around 30 to 40 grams, if not more of protein per meal, every meal and getting, getting at least that 90 to hundred grams in a day is super important. And then healthy fats, of course, right? We want gut healing foods. So good probiotics, good prebiotics. We want to keep that flora, you know, in a nice balance. And then the third thing I would say would be, um, electrolytes. A lot of people drink a lot of water all day, but they don't realize it's, it's not hydrating without electrolytes because your electrolyte balance helps you stay healthy and strong and, and hydrated. And it, 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 um, manifests itself in when you're dehydrated in things like headaches and fatigue and These are not good messages we want to be sending around our body, especially when it comes to our mitochondrial health. We want to keep our electrolyte balance in check. So make sure you get enough protein, eat those healthy fats, and stay um, hydrated with electrolytes. And then I love your, your comments on intermittent fasting. I think there is an intermittent fasting window for everybody. It's not the same for everybody. Um, but it, it is there and it's a great tool to use in optimizing your health and wellness. And all okay. of these things are going to help support spending the money with the health professional who's going to help you with your hair growth, right? Why spend all the money, all the time, all the emotion and energy with, if you're not going to support it with a healthy lifestyle. Amen. Yeah. Preaching to the choir. Okay, good. (laughs) Well, Dr. Raven, it was such a pleasure to have you on today. I know my listeners are going to be so um, intrigued by all this information and just soak it in and start doing the homework they need to be doing to get on a better path for hair growth. And I know that I am super grateful for your laser cap. (laughs) It has been the biggest game changer in my personal equation. And I've got this nice, yes. thick, yeah, I mean, I'm not like you, but with the bald, but I've got really nice, thick curls back and, and going strong and I don't yeah. have any shedding anymore. And going it's just in the right direction. Namaste to you for all of your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. I will list all of your um, contact information in the show notes. And I have a savings Very code good. that your, um, your son who works for you and runs the company gave me to use for everybody. So there'll be a little savings for everyone there. Super. And um, also for everyone out there, just Google laser cap and start reading about it. Start educating yourself. So when you do get that appointment with your hair care uh, professional, you have some information to bring in with you. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you again. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Lifestyle changes can be hard and overwhelming to make. By building your support team of functional medicine doctors, therapists, and health coaches, you can reach your optimal health goals. Be sure to check out my other podcasts. Until we meet again, stay healthy.